you need to examine yourself. If all about you, men are making a holiday out of the Lord's day, you dead sure need to examine yourself of whether that day is the Lord in your life. For the Lord and nothing else. Not for the Lord and pleasure, not for the Lord and going to see Grandma, not for the Lord and going fishing, not for the Lord and anything, just for the Lord. That's his day. Amen. That's the God's truth. You don't believe America's in a mess. You watch the church members making holiday out of God's holy day. That's a, that's a mark of the death of a people that surely is Rothbard is preaching to you. You are living in a generation where the Sunday morning Christianity that the stench in the nostrils of a holy God is making one wonder why God don't burn our church people up every Sunday morning as they get out of that back door in a hurry to go do something that'll pamper their flesh the rest of the day. They sit by their televisions, they go fishing, they do this, they do that, and they call themselves Christian. They go and split hell wide open. A Christian does not knowingly and willfully violate God's holy law. He delights in it. And he meditates in it day and night. And the, the commandments of the Lord God are not grievous to his children. They are precious and they are delightful. He's been down there all this time, so here's that fella, the rich man's body, according to the scripture, still in the grave. His old brain's long since decayed, but his memory's with him in hell. I tell you, memories can be mighty sweet, or they can be off the bitter. Son, remember, remember, Lord, let's, let's be done with this now. What's done's done. Let's just forget about it. No, Abraham said, Son, remember. Remember. Remember what? Remember what happened down there on the earth. Well, I want to forget it. No, Son, remember. What an awful judgment. To be condemned. To be harassed. And tormented. And sat down. And trailed. Throughout a long eternity, men have their memories in hell. You'll take yours there. I want you to join me tonight. I'm going to ask Abraham, if he will, to take us on a tour of hell. Abraham, if you don't mind, take me on a tour of hell. You want to help me preach. You want to help me warn sinners. I want to help me brave the ridicule of this religious generation that says, well, that preacher try and scare people. You are dead right. I sure wish I could scare you. I wish I could get you where you're afraid of sin. I wish I'd get you where you're afraid of facing the holy God. Oh, well, I can or not. I want with tears. I want with authority. I want with passion to warn you. Not of something I thought of, but of the eternal consequences of the fact that God's a holy God and he's got to punish sin. So I want Abraham to take us tonight on a tour of hell. And Abraham and I go down the elevator and land in hell. And immediately we're in Bedlam. And I see a multitude of people over to my right. And they're knocking open. And open the door, please. Open the door, please. Open the door. For God's sake, somebody open the door. Open the door, please. Open the door. And I say, what on earth is going on over there, Abraham? What they trying to do? Oh, he said, they're knocking on the door of Noah's ark. I said, well, I don't see Noah's ark here. He said, oh, no, Noah's ark's not in hell. But they think it is. It's in their memory. And all they do is go around 24 hours a day, day in and day out, night in and night out, year in and year out, eternity piles on eternity. And all they do is 
Knock on the shut door. I said, well, there's no door there. No. But it's in their memory. They lived unrighteous lives. How you know? Because Noah preached righteousness. They wouldn't believe it. Oh, they didn't believe that judgment was coming. Every time they drove a nail in the ark. It is saying, judgment coming, judgment coming, judgment coming, judgment coming. The wrath of God is revealed from him against all ungodliness and all righteousness. Judgment coming, judgment coming. Get in the ark, get in the ark, get in the ark. But nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody did. Seven years. More, Noah said, seven days. Still nobody got in the ark. He condemned the world. He said the boat's rocking, boys. This ain't not going on forever. The wrath of God can be, can come to its end sometime. It's piling up wrath on wrath, vengeance on vengeance. The judgment's coming, judgment's coming, judgment's coming. Get the land out of your heels, he said to his generation. And repent. But nobody did. Nobody did. When the flood came, scientists tell us there were three billion people on the earth at that time. I don't know whether it's telling the truth or not. I have no reason to doubt it. Three billion people. At least as many people as live on this earth now. And you know how many of them God Almighty destroyed and sent to hell and they're down there now knocking on a door that's not there haunted by a memory for passing by. The only ark of safety and found in under their rebellious spirit of unrighteous, lawless living, the cries of the prophet of God, crying righteousness. They'll never get away from it. God sent three billion of them to hell. Oh, I know, I know. Then we don't believe that. Oh, good God, wouldn't send three billion people to hell one time, let's hate so. But he did. He did. God help us. So our Bible, the way it just face it, God going to catch up with sin some of these days. That's right. And we pass by, and Abraham says, remember, remember. That's all I got to do, remember, remember, remember. We pass on through the corridors of hell. And I see a man over there, and he's saying, Take it away, take it away, take it away. For God's sake, won't somebody please come and take this awful thing away? I'm tormented by please somebody. Take this thing away. And I say, Who's that? Uh, Abraham, he said, That's heaven. I said, What is he trying to do? He said, He's trying to get somebody to take the head of John the Baptist away. So he carries around with him and tries to get somebody to take it. It's fit burden. He can't forget. I say, well, Abraham, I don't see the head of John the Baptist. Abraham said, no, Rob. The head of John the Baptist is sitting in hell, but it's in the memory of heaven. He can't get away from it. He remembers how he went out to hear John the Baptist preach and he feared him and called him a just man. And he quit chewing the back and drinking liquor and stealing money and a few other things. But! One day, John said, Herod, you're living in open, lawless, adulterous relationship with your brother's wife. And old Herodias would have killed him, but she couldn't. But Herod had a drunken party. His stepdaughter danced for him, and in his cups he was pleased. And he, he, he uh, going to give her a present. And she slipped in the curtain and said, Mom, what you want me to ask the old man? Said, ask the head of that preacher. And so he came out and he said, I'll give you anything you want to the half of my kingdom. He said, well, give me the head of John the Baptist. He sent a couple of boys down and unlocked the jail door. And took John the Baptist, the greatest man that ever lived. What the scripture said. And they laid his head down on a block like the old turkey gobbler and severed it off and put it in a big charger and took it and brought it to that wicked woman. And old Herod, old Herod is tormented by the head of the John the Baptist right while I'm speaking to you now. You can't get away from it. We pass by and Abraham says, Son, remember we pass on 
And there's a man going around screaming, Oh, if I could just get it off! If I could just get it off! Oh, if I could get it off! Oh, won't you get it off? Somebody help me get this off! And I say, Who's that? Well, that's Pilate. What's the matter here? He's trying to get the blood off his hands. And I walk up close and I don't see Abraham, I don't see any blood. Oh, no. There's no blood on his hands. It's in his memory. It's in his memory. He remembers. He remembers being warned of his wife. He remembers that experience. He remembers when he tried that fellow Jesus, according to the law of the Roman Empire, the justest law the world had ever known, and found not a thing on earth to condemn him over. And he would have released him. But he said, no, sir. And there he was. Would he defend Caesar? Would he offend the Jews? Or would he release that innocent man? And so he weighed the situation carefully. Some of you will have to weigh it tonight. That sore spot in your life, it's got to go. If you get to Christ, you're going to weigh it. Some of you will trade your hope of salvation one more time for that rotten spot in your life that's kept you from Christ all these days. And so he got him a basin of water, and he washed his hands. But he never did get rid of the blood. And it's still there in his memory. He remembers. And Abraham and I pass by, and Abraham says, Son, remember. We pass on, and there's a little girl, and she looks up, and she sees me, and she said, That's not fire! Get him away! 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 And I say, Abraham, I know that girl. He said, Yes, sir. Everybody in hell knows who you are, Rob. said, That little girl just talks all the time. Get him away! Get him away! I don't want to see him again! I don't want to think of him again! Get rid of him! Get rid of him! I say, Abraham, I'm not in hell. No, no, but you are calling her. You're in her memory. She can't forget you. She can't forget that time in Arkansas. One night, the Spirit of God fell on the congregation. Multitudes were swept into the kingdom of God. The whole congregation became a giant, primating Christian, praying for souls and sinners, screaming for mercy. It was the work of the sovereign spirit. That little 16-year-old girl didn't kneel, but she stood there and grabbed the pew in front of her until the back the veins in her hands would burst and a great pool of tears were at her feet. And she held on for dear life in that sort of atmosphere where God's people spoke to her and the spirit honored it. And she stood there and she trembled and she was and that service passed away and finally the people began to go home and I couldn't have kept from it if the devil and all his angels were there as the congregation was melting she kept standing there going on to that seat and weeping and I slipped up to her and would have a word to say and she turned and looked at and said no go talk to me said I'm going to be saved tomorrow night said I'm going to get saved tomorrow night said I'm not going to be saved tonight said I know she talked to me I'm not going to be saved tonight and the tears melted and she turned loose and all I could think of Proverbs 27 and 1 oh not thyself of tomorrow for thou knowest not what a day will bring forth and she went home and at 10 o'clock the next morning she was a star basketball player girl basketball player little high school team and she was practicing and she got right in the exact middle of the court and she gave a great agonizing cry and fell over on the floor and time the players got to her she was dead tomorrow she died uh, she said the night before don't talk to me I'm going to get saved tomorrow night oh my Tomorrow night she is in hell. Oh, and she can't forget. Abraham says she quotes Proverbs 27 and 1. Both not thy separate tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day will bring forth. I know people don't believe that, but still so. A little girl in hell is quoting that scripture, trying to get people to get me out of hell. I'm in her memory. And that scripture's in a memory. And that night's in a memory. 
and those tears the Holy Spirit produced in her memory. I had to hang on to that seed to keep from yielding to the Spirit ruling. She'll never forget it. And we pass by the little girl. And Abraham says, Son, remember, I'm going to get into theology now that's bigger than I am for just a minute. But the memory of the love of God will be the most terrible thing to torment you. Oh, the love of God, don't limit it. Oh, it's greater far than tongue or pen can ever say. To say that God so loved the world as to give. Men despise it, take it for granted now. It'll haunt them throughout the reaches of eternal days. I'm here! Despite the fact that God so loved me for ten million worlds is the love of God. Yet I'm in hell. The memory of the love of God. Men will never get away from it in eternity. 